Hi everyone, welcome to the first video within chapter 11. This video is going to be talking about um, the three states of matter and how intermolecular forces play a key role in those states of matter. Um, this is section 11.1 in the book. So if you watch this video and you still have some questions, skim through that section um, and maybe add anything to your notes that you think is important. So the main difference between states of matter is the strength of the intermolecular forces of attraction. So the stronger the intermolecular force, um, the closer together the particles are. And so solids and liquids have much stronger intermolecular forces, which is why if you look at these particle diagrams, the, the molecules or the atoms, um, or when you talk about ionic, um, the formula units are so much closer together. Solids and liquids are referred to as condensed phases because the particles are so close together. Um, we'll talk about fluids, which are liquids and gases a little bit later, um, and those are called fluids because they flow easily. And so if you take a look at this picture, um, as you go from gas to liquid to solid, the strength of the intermolecular attraction increases. So gases, it's the weakest because the particles are furthest apart. In solids, they're the strongest because they're um, closer together. And then liquids are kind of somewhere in between. So differences in the states of matter. So this is table 11.1 from your book. It describes key characteristics of each state of matter. Um, a lot of these you're probably familiar with, but it's important to just keep this in mind as we work through and as we continue to reference them. So gases. They take the volume in the shape of the container. Um, they're easily compressible. Um, but liquids, if we think about liquids, the intermolecular forces are strong enough that the particles are held closer together. Um, what that means is liquids tend to have a higher density and are less compressible than gases. Um, again, that's because of the strength of intermolecular forces. With solids, the intermolecular forces are even stronger, uh, which means that it has its own shape and volume. Um, you cannot compress it at all. It doesn't flow, um, and you know it stays very, very compact in the crystal lattice. So, looking at the states of matter, uh, when we are deciding, you know, which state of matter something is. We can look at two things. We can look at the kinetic energy and we can look at the energy between the particles. We can look at that energy of attraction. Um, the kinetic energies, like we talked about in the gases unit, are always based on temperature. Um, the kinetic energies tend to keep the particles apart and keep them moving, where the inner particle attractions tend to draw the particles together and that slows them down. And so when the interparticle attraction is greater than the kinetic energy, the particles stay very close together. And so I'll say that again. When the inner particle energy of attraction, so the attractive energy, when that overcomes kinetic energy, that means that the particles are more attracted than they are wanting to move around, you're in the solid phase. Uh, when the kinetic energy of the particles, though, is much greater than the energy of attraction, okay, that means that your particles, all they want to do is move around. Um, that means that you're in the gas phase. That means that particles want to be very far apart. And then liquid, again, liquid kind of gets stuck in the middle. Um, the kinetic energies and the energy of attractions are, are similar. So with states of matter, um, like I said, each state of matter differs in intermolecular forces. Each state of matter also differs in kinetic energy. So the higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy. And when you have a high average kinetic energy, that makes the attractive forces less significant. So when you have very fast particle motion, that means that they're not very attracted, which means they probably have weak forces in between the particles. Um, when we look at the gases, again, um, particle diagrams are so important as we progress through the year. Um, gases are just very disorderly. 
uh, lots of empty space, they can move as far apart as they wish. Gases have the weakest intermolecular forces. Okay? They have the weakest attraction between the particles. If we cool the gas down, we go to liquid. So think about what phase change that is when you go from gas to liquid. Uh, liquid particles, they're still somewhat disorderly. Um, they're free to move past each other, but they're still close together. Then if you cool this liquid down even further, so again, think about what this phase change is, you get to a solid. Um, in a solid, you have um, an ordered arrangement, very close together, they're very orderly. Um, that's gonna be the strongest particle attraction. Then think about what these phase changes are going the other way, going from solid to liquid, right? You heat it up. Going from liquid to gas, you heat it up again. Um, what I want you to also think about when you label these phase changes in your notes is think about if it's an exothermic or an endothermic process. Right? Try to bring all of that old information back in so that way when we start to combine everything, you're kind of used to thinking about all of the different things that we've talked about so far. With states of matter, um, it's important to know about the three different types of kinetic energies. So we can have vibrational energy, okay? And the vibrational energy is the kinetic energy that is due to the vibration within the molecules. Um, when you talk about vibrational transitions, which when we get to more spectroscopy, we'll talk about it, um, the vibrational energy tends to correspond to the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, rotational energy is the kinetic energy that's just due to the rotation of the molecule. And then translational energy is the kinetic energy that's due to the motion from one location to another. So as a gas particle moves from one side of the box to another, um, it has translational kinetic energy. So what this has done is this has just kind of summarized the states of matter um, and hopefully got you thinking about the attraction that's between the particles so as we get into intermolecular forces, we can refer back to the states of matter.